What has your own experience been? If you want to share with us, you know, uh, via our Twitter handle or through an email. While you are thinking about that, we have with us in the studio this morning to have a conversation around old and new Naira uh, controversy. Mr. Muda Yusuf, Dr. Muda Yusuf, yes, that's it. Uh, CEO, Center for the Promotion of Private Enterprise, CPPE. He is also former DG. LCCI. Thank you so much for your time this morning. Thank you very much. Um, good morning. You saw that report. Yeah. What do you make of it? Well, it's a, it's a chaos that uh, is avoidable. Mm. Because uh, we don't need to go through all this simply because we want to introduce new Naira notes. The intention may be noble, but the process and the methodology uh, is, is, is very, very defective. And uh, what I can call the collateral damage is enormous. Because in other claims, you don't rush these kind of things. Because the, the main issue here is the rush. You think it is rushed? Yes, it is rushed. Because you don't, uh, I mean, this, this is a country of 200 million people. This is a country where you have over 13 million people who don't have bank accounts. This, this is an economy where the rural economy and the informal sector are basically cash driven. This is an economy where many of the uh, micro enterprises deal a lot in cash. Then you have issues with infrastructure, you have issues with insecurity, you have issues with financial inclusion, you have issues with areas where there are no even banks and no ATMs, sometimes even no network. So these peculiarities should have been factored in into the plan to transit from this uh, old note to new note. Perhaps one of the uh, arguments that the CBN came up with concern, concerning this last point that you made is that they have these POS operators all over the place. <coughs> Excuse me, that, that they, those ones, they ranged about 30,000 of them or thereabouts spread all over the nation that wherever you didn't even, even where as you say they don't have banks and all they have these pos operators who have been you know dissipated all over the place they they were supposed to help mop up the old uh, you know narrow notes and give uh, begin to distribute the new ones you see the thing is that this thing has been based on assumptions that are not valid and for such an important policy matter you need evidence, you need data. So that you don't throw your citizens, especially the vulnerable segments of the society. When you say they don't have data, what do you mean? Because I, I want to assume that the CBN, for instance, will get data about the number of POSs you know, from the banks. Because I don't see how a POS operator would operate without being connected to one bank or the other. Yes, they, they are connected. What I mean by data is the totality of the variables that will make this thing successful. I talked about the number of people that are unbanked, for instance. If you want to make use of POS, you must have a bank account. At least you must go with your card. Now you don't, have a, you don't even have a bank account. So how are you going to relate with the POS person? Then in terms of the demand for cash, because what the CBN had done is to grossly underestimate what this process requires. Grossly underestimated the demands of this. So what are those things? Now, that I think? had the CBN governor uh, when he was at the House of Reps uh, ad hoc committee saying mm -hmm. that they have deployed POS people, they give maximum of 10,000 Naira. If you know the volume of business that is taking place in all these rural communities, particularly those who are trading in agro-commodities, or those who are trading in livestock. They are talking of 500,000, sometimes in millions. You know how much a truckload of yam is? Or a truckload of tomato or onions or potatoes? These are the kind of activities that are taking place in these rural areas. Now so why you now say you have deployed somebody to be given 13,000? How far can that go? Now, now that so you... the man has, we have completely crippled 
major segments of this economy. And the earlier we quickly reverse it, before it snowballs into another big crisis, the better. Now that you refer to the CBN governor's appearance at the House of Representatives ad hoc committee, mm. let's look at that critically. How sufficient was his explanation that, um, you know, the new NARA notes are seen in parties are being sprayed rather than what they were meant for? Uh, will the entire quantum of what the CBN has released into circulation be in uh, parties alone? Is, and did the House of Representatives did do due diligence at that meeting to interrogate him enough to demand, you know, how much exactly was released into circulation? You see, I was, I was disappointed at the hearing. Because when I listened to Dodo Gua, who, I mean, the majority leader of the House, the way he was filming and talking before the hearing, now you now have the CBN governor on seat. Rather than put critical issues on the table, interrogate him and let him respond. That did not happen. I watched it. Even the members of the committee asked some very relevant questions which were supposed to be responded to by the CBN governor. The chairman did not allow them. He just rushed the whole thing as if the appearance of the CBN government was just to fulfill all righteousness. The key issues were not tackled. People were asking him very relevant questions about, okay, when you say there should be no withdrawal over the counter, how do you want the man who has traveled for maybe 100, 200 kilometers to come to the city? Possibly all the cash that he's using for business, maybe 500,000. You said they should deposit it. They have deposited it. And you now gave instruction that there should be no transactions over the counter, that the man should go to ATM. Meanwhile, many of the ATMs, even as at yesterday, many of the ATMs were not dispensing. This man has deposited all his working capital, maybe 500,000, maybe 1 million. The maximum you can get from an ATM is probably maybe 10,000 at a time. How will that work? So the whole hearing did not achieve any objective. Well, Mr. Isu, I'm yes. sorry, Dr. Isu, there's, there's a critical issue that we may have been missing and which, according to you, the House of Representatives at our committee didn't quite address. And it's, I think it's something salient that the CBN itself needs to speak very, very candidly to. The fact that the unbanked, some of them are doing business. We heard a woman you know, earlier on the program saying that she doesn't do banks anymore because of you know, whatever experiences she mm -hmm. may have had. Mm -hmm. Now, there are those who are doing those businesses in quantums of Naira, as you yeah. said earlier, mm -hmm. uh, those in agro products, mm -hmm. including cattle yeah. and all of those things. Mm -hmm. That could run into hundreds of thousands, sometimes in millions. Yeah. Now, if these are unbanked and they have to also swap their old notes for the new ones. What should be the process for them? No, the process is to open a window. What bring window? In, no, in the, on a desk, desk in some of these locations. Okay. If you need to move to those rural areas, you move there with security and with your cash. As you bring in your old note, you swap immediately with new notes. What has happened in this instance? It's like a deliberate impoundment or confiscation of people's cash. That is what it's looking like. Now, the CBN governor said they have mobbed out about 1.9 trillion. The question is, did you give back 1.9 million to the, uh, trillion to the people? Certainly not. The CBN... People, as they were mopping up, they were returning people's cash. This crisis will not arise. But in response to that, the CBN says it, had, uh, it has agents across the country that will be available to uh, swap old notes for the new notes. Have you heard about those agents, the presence of those agents anywhere around in Nigeria, particularly in the hinterland? Well, I, haven't have, I don't have much information about that. But the fundamental issue is that let's even start from the cities. You said the banks were open over the weekend, <coughs> deposit your cash. Now, the worry about people now is that they have deposited their money. Give them back their money. You said they should go to ATM. 
That is the problem. Now you said you have more dropped 1.9 trillion. Did you return back 1.9 trillion to the people? That is where the problem is coming from. Uh -uh. Now even some people, they don't have money to eat now. It's as bad as that. No money to, because all the cash they have, they have deposited it in the hope that you will swap it and give them their money. Now you go back to the bank. First, you say, nobody should attend to anybody over the counter. So if you have deposited one million through the, through the bank, then you're not going to queue at the ATM. You, you, know, you see how chaotic the thing is? But there are two things, two, two issues uh, also being raised here. First of all is the fact that uh, Mr. Mefieli says that the banks are to blame for this, for this scarcity of new narrow notes, that the banks are the ones holding it. Do you agree with that? No, no, no. no. You know, uh, she asked the question as to this issue of spraying narrow notes and all of that. Mm. Now, those are micro issues. This is not the first, I'm not endorsing the spraying of Naira notes. But this is not the first time people have been spraying Naira notes. And we didn't have any crisis in the bank. No, the spraying the brand new notes brand new. When, they brand are not new. They, when they are not available in the, in at the, the ATMs. Uh, at the and ATMs. even in the banks, in the for banks. some people, my colleague, as, as you saw earlier, could only get 50 Naira notes. In fact, I don't even know how it's going to deal with that one. But... Ayo, that do you, has been happening even before this redesign. Okay, but in this agreement, in this yes. conversation now, from the fallout of that meeting with the House of Representatives, where the CBN, and that's not the first time he's saying it, that the CBN governor is saying that the banks are responsible for the scarcity. Do you agree? No, I don't agree with that. Uh, and is the, it... bank, the banks don't have, I don't think they, they, they have that boldness. Because I know the way they relate with the CBN. Uh, and Dr. Yusuf, is this even plausible that all of the volume of cash printed by the CBN is being sprayed in uh, uh, that, parties. That, that, is so, that, that, that doesn't still explain the cash it does, it doesn't. It Does doesn't. It? it doesn't. It doesn't. That's why I said that those are micro issues. We need to deal with fundamentals. And the fundamentals is that there's acute shortage of this cash. So what exactly is the responsible for the shortage? Now, what I'm suspecting, the CBN governor has been saying that 85% of cash is outside the system. And that is not good, blah, blah, blah. And let me even say this at this point. The place of cash is not within the banking system. Cash is supposed to be outside the banks, not within the banks. So it's a very wrong notion to think that the way to manage monetary policy it's for you to go and be mopping up people's cash. Perhaps to foster the cashless so, policy. To now force Perhaps to the, the, foster the, 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 the cashless something on them. But isn't that... Let, let me land there. My, my apologies on that. Yes. Isn't it... It's, it's not a new thing. It's been more than 10 years since we've been talking about... About 10 years now since we've been talking about the cashless policy. The point is that even that... I'm just trying to ex explain the principles. Mm. If it was 80% of money that is outside the bank, you can worry about that. But there is money and there is cash. Cash is only 5% of money. Because all these billionaires, are they carrying cash? Their money is resting in the bank accounts. Mm. Total money supply as at the end of 2022 was 52 trillion naira. This cash that we are shouting about is just 2.6 trillion. So what is the big deal? 95% of money. It's still within the banking system. Okay, well, my colleague Malpoe, so, you know. So it, it is a wrong impression to give. Yeah, okay. That 85% of money is outside the banking system. Then you now go and be mopping up people's money. Okay. It's Let, very wrong. Let's take uh, Malpoe's question for you, Dr. Yusuf. Malpoe, go ahead. Uh, good morning, Mr. Yusuf. I was wondering, do you think that there is an overestimation of just how much people had taken on or absorbed this cashless system has, has been propagated by the CBN before now? You see, we have made significant progress as far as this cashless system is concerned. The latest figure we had from the NIBSS, in 2022, cash transaction was, cash transaction was, I mean, cashless transaction was 395 trillion naira. In 2022, 
And the report stated that we had an increase of 42%. That's to show you how much progress we have made. POS transaction was over 8 trillion. Mobile money was also in the neighborhood of 8 to 10 trillion. Transactions payment that people make on, on bills, to pay bills, to pay electricity bills, is over 2 trillion. So you don't fix what is not broken. And the way to measure the dominance of cash in an economy is to compare your cash to your GDP. Cash is 2.6 trillion. GDP is almost 250 trillion. Cash to GDP in Nigeria, I mean, yes, cash to GDP in Nigeria is just it's less than 1.5%. Even in the advanced economies, it's sometimes in the range of 10%. In the Eurozone, it's 10%. So a lot of progress has been made. So all of this issue and noise about cashless is almost unnecessary because this cash we are talking about is only the segment in the rural economy, the micro enterprises, the farmers, the artisans, all this retail. These are the people using the cash. So they are the people that you have thrown into this into this chaos. The big guys don't use much cash. And this cash, as a percentage of money, is just about 5%. Money supply is, is 52 trillion. Cash is 2.6 trillion. So what is the basis of all this? So there is need for proper understanding of how these things work so that you don't create unnecessary confusion. And I had the CBI and say to you, bring down inflation. Do you think that also, I mean, because some people will say right now. I'm listening to some you. Some people will say right now, it is difficult because this is the season. It is difficult to divorce politics uh, from the policies of the CBN. I mean, this is, it might not be, it might not have been planned at all, but this is the period in which the CBN has decided to do this. You can even hear uh, some of the presidential aspirants, uh, you know, de deducing intention into, you know, the policy of the CBN. One party says, oh, this uh, could have an adverse impact on the people. The other says, you know, a CBN governor refused to be blackmailed. Um, do you think that this has anything, the, the period in which this particular policy was carried out is perhaps what has caused the distortion in what we're seeing with the scarcity. Well, I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't say it is because of that. What I will say is that the CBN in dealing with this matter has grossly underestimated what it takes for this, for this uh, task to be accomplished. Secondly, there is this talk about vote buying. That is, the, that is the main connection I will draw with this policy. That is to ensure that there is no enough cash for politicians to buy votes. But whether you, you should not be using this kind of approach to deal with that kind of matter, it's a different thing. Because if you are aiming at a handful of politicians who will buy votes, I you now throw millions of Nigerians into this crisis. What sense does that make? And in any case, we have what we call the Financial Intelligence Unit. Their, their, their task or their, their, their purpose is to monitor transactions in banks. So that if there is any suspicious transaction, you, track, you flag it and you, report, you, you, you invite the attention of the security agencies. You should not say because you want to target politicians and you now make a sweeping uh, policy that is affecting innocent people. Well, the CBN has since denied that it is trying to target politicians. It has since said that that was not one of the reasons that it, it, it you know, came up with this particular policy. The, the question I'm trying to ask, assuming that we're one of the you know, uh, unintended consequences of, of it, um, and, and also, given the season in which it has happened, uh, I'm just wondering whether that also has added to what it is that we're currently seeing. Because some people will say, if this had happened maybe early in 2022 or maybe early in 2021, maybe the amount of currency which the CBN had released might not you know, cause this much furore. Well, it is possible. 
But you know, you are now taking the discussion into the political space. And I wouldn't want to be part of their argument because I don't know what exactly is happening. But the fact that even the CBN governor himself at the time was also his presidential aspirant, that may also have created some credibility problem around this issue. Because that in itself was bad enough for a city CBN governor to be talking about contesting, to be going to court that he doesn't want to vacate the seat, he wants to remain there and still contest and all of that. Those things created also credibility problem. So that when you are even taking a decision innocently, it has made the whole, both himself and the institution, vulnerable to all manner of interpretations. So do you think that is also, that in a way uh, corroborates the opinion of some people that this decision could be political? Of course, it makes it vulnerable. I mean, it has, it has exposed, he has exposed himself to that kind of interpretation by being involved in partisan politics. To the extent that you now said you are a, politi you are, you, you are a presidential aspirant. We saw the vehicles all over the place. We saw all sorts of people on TV and all of that. Even got a lawyer to go to court. So this thing also will have created issues around it. But more importantly, because what is important is to solve this problem. Nigerians are suffering. So what do you propose? What we propose, what I'm proposing is that urgently, and the president has to weigh in on this very urgently. If the CBN doesn't have enough cash to give to people, as it is done in other claims, the old currency and the new currency should co-circulate for between three to six months, while the CBN gradually withdraws the old notes and replace with new one. That is one. Secondly, all the cash that the CBN said it, that it has mobbed up. Because the CBN governor said they have mobbed up 1.9 trillion. They should give back the 1.9 trillion to all the people that need their money. We cannot sit on people's money in the name of promoting cashless objective or cashless society. That is not the way it is done. Do you see a situation where people will say, if, because we never know what government is going to do at any time, if this is how it's going to be difficult for me to get my cash, I'd rather not go to the banks? Of course, of course. Now it's that, logic, eh? Okay. Now, you, you may have also seen the videos making the rounds of some people, you know, going to the banks and coming up with all kinds of, all manner of ways to protest. You know, with, with all, all those things are happening. People are very, very displeased about the fact that they cannot have access to their, to their money. Yeah. You saw that, uh, you know, conversation with my yeah. colleague yeah. Uh, w among some Nigerians yeah. saying yeah. they've been queuing for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. There are those who are suggesting that things could go out of hand. What are the risks we are at if the CBN does not deal decisively with this issue? No, the, 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 there is a very high risk of uh, social unrest. Because uh, this, is, this is clearly unjust and I would say even insensitive. Because the pain that people are going through, and just as I said, this thing is affecting the ordinary people the most. Because there are the people using cash. They don't have the capacity to absorb too much shock. So it could snowball into a major crisis. Okay. And we should not allow it to get to that point. So the CBN, the president should quickly intervene. Let the CBN allow the old nose and the new nose to exist side by side until such a time when they have enough new nose to go around. Uh, and do you see, you know, what would have been the goal of this um policy, which is financial inclusion, do you see a risk here where the unbanked, you know, are discouraged and uh, would rather not participate, you know, in, in banking for a very long time? Of course, of course, of course. This will discourage a lot of people and achieve the exact opposite of the objective that they want to achieve. You say you want to promote financial inclusion. People have thrown the mo their own money into, into this system. Many of them, this money is their working capital. And they are finding it. So if they are able to succeed in taking out the money, they won't go back to the bank. Well, there, there is another, because it's a very terrible experience. There's another risk that the DSS weighed into. 
which, I mean, I'm sure you heard about that and saw the report where the DSS is saying, look, they cracked down on a syndicate of people, you know, commercializing the, some way, some kind of racket going on concerning the new Naira notes. And they also indicted some commercial bank officers, uh, commercial bank officials. And you're saying that it's not as much of what the banks are doing or not doing. It's as much as what, or as much of what the CBN is doing or not doing. And you still think that the banks, no, it, the, the it banks is, are not it, indicted in this? No, no, no. It, it is part of the problem. The point I was making was that yeah. this uh, enterprise around hawking of currency notes mm. precedes this crisis that we are faced with. Agreed. Mm -hmm. That has always been there. Yes. And that's an impunity. I don't know how that car has continued to happen. And nobody was talking about it. It has almost even become a normal thing. You go to parties, you go to events, they are hawking the Naira nose, even before now. So the CBN should have even taken action on that long it, before is now. Is it the CBN that should take action on it if it's a criminal offense? Isn't, isn't it something for you know, security agents to pursue and rein in on those who are going after it? That's on the one hand. On the second hand, is it possible for you know, hawkers of currency to be carrying brand new notes that people do not have access to, you know, in the main markets and in the commercial system where they need to, without the banks being in cahoots with these people who hawk the Naira notes? Of course, of course. They are in league with the banks. If you talk to them, they will tell you how much they pay to buy it, as it were, from the banks. And they put their own money and they sell it. And you'll be shocked that the hierarchy of people that are involved in that kind of racket. Within the banks? Yes. You'll be shocked. I mean, for brand new notes to be coming out from the vaults of banks, I mean, the top high hierarchy of the banks, must, they must know about it. Well, let's just believe that right now the CBN and everyone involved in this whole conversation has heard you and would do the needful. Particularly, as you said, the presidency, which has been speaking for a while. Dr. Muda Yusuf is CEO, Center for the Promotion of Private Enterprises, CPPE. He is a former DG of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Thank you so much for your perspective. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, your comments are welcome. In the meantime, stay with us. We're back after now. <laughs>